We are very fortunate tonight to have uh, with us Dr. Westberg uh, that uh, did come especially from Europe just to attend this symposium and uh, share with us his uh, experience. I think his uh, unique experience tonight is uh, going to be really helpful because he is uh, one center that has different technology from Abiumed and he has also the chance to transition patient from the Ampella to the AB5000, so he's gonna share his experience with us. So, good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Just arriving from uh, Sweden yesterday, this is a kind of breakfast session for me, and I must say this is uh, the best breakfast I've had for a long time. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to tell you about uh, uh, our uh, experience by using the minimally invasive device, the impeller pumps. We have uh, used and are using all four pumps. Uh, from the left, you can see the two peripheral versions, the smaller one, LP2.5, which we just heard about, uh, which you introduce percutaneously using the Seldinger technique. And then it's a larger percutaneous pump, 5.0, which you need to expose the femoral article in the, in the uh, uh, expose it and introduce it that way. And the impeller LD, which you introduce in the ascending aorta by using a graft. And on the right side, you see the impeller RD uh, to use on the right side of the heart. The inflow cannula is placed in the right atrium and the outflow cannula in the pulmonary artery. And <coughs> By using all these four pumps, you use the same console, so you don't have a single console for a single pump. You can use uh, the same console for, for all of these four pumps, and the console is really easy to learn and easy to use. In uh, Europe overall, there now have been uh, roughly 900 implants in uh, uh, a lot of countries, and as you can see on the top, the cardiology, of course, mostly uses the percutaneous versions 2.5, uh, and on the other hand, in the uh, cardiac surgery manner, you use all four kind of pumps. In uh, our hospital, I must say, primarily, uh, we use the impeller pumps as a bridge to decision. It's easy to implant, and uh, uh, we can put the patient in a stable situation and we gain time to evaluate the patient, see what the patient suffers from, decide uh, what kind of uh, long-term assist device the patient will use, or if, if the patient recovers within a short time, just keep on using the impella until the heart recovers, or as a bridge to bridge to another long-term assist device. So far we have in our hospital implanted 29 impella devices. Uh, from the LD and the two peripheral versions to the right device. And uh, you can see on the right side the variety of uh, support time from a day up to two weeks. Uh, the results uh, overall, you can see that in each of these groups there is a mixture. Some patients that makes early recovery, some patients where we use the impella as a bridge to bridge to another assist device, and so on. And we also have in this uh, LP2.5 group five patients where we uh, use the Impella 2.5 during a high-risk uh, high PCI procedure. And overall, if you take this heterogeneous group together, we have a survival rate within the patients of 72%. Cases or five patients, just to give an example of how we use the, the uh, impeller pumps in the clinical setting. The first one is an example how we use the RD as, an, as a bridge to recovery. First, uh, the, uh, overall, the diagnosis of the uh, right device. Uh, some patients has been post cardiotomy, where you have a, a single right side failure. There have also been some patients with dilated and ischemic cardiomyopathy. Most of them has been combined where you primarily has implanted a long-term assist device on the left side and then postoperability had problems with uh, right side heart failure. And also one patient who suffered from right ventricular failure 
just after heart transplantation. The first case is a 38 years old woman, a problem with dilated cardiomyopathy, and she was treated several times with levosimidone, and she was also listed for transplant. And this was a problem before, not now, but before these patients, the cardiologists, they own the patient, and they treat them for levosimidone for a long period of time. And those patients uh, we don't know anything about until the cardiologists call from the cath lab and say, okay, we have a problem here. We have a woman, she has a cardiac index of 0 0.8. Uh, she has lung edema, kidney, liver function, and so on. She had an immediate implant of an heart mate 1, and hours postoperatively, she showed signs of right ventricular failure. So we implanted an RD device, and she was treated with that for seven days. And uh, different centers use, of course, different left ventricular assist devices. And it doesn't matter really what assist device you use. You can still use the right uh, device to support the right side if you get problem with right side failure postoperatively. And uh, here is the same wo woman who is uh, now successfully uh, heart transplanted. The second case is an example how we use the impeller on the right side as a bridge to bridge. He's male and he was uh, 62 years old, also listed for heart transplant due to dilated cardiomyopathy. He had a uh, uh, planned implantation of a heart mate one and initially everything went well and he was extubated 24 hours later. Later on he got worse and showed all signs of severe right ventricular failure. So we took him back to the OR and implanted an Impella RD. And after 10 days, we, show, uh, we saw no signs at all of recovery. So therefore, we decided to convert him to a long-term system, the AB5000 on the right side. He went on with this uh, 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 pump for 312 days. And I think he is the patient being on the AB5000 for the longest period of time. And after that, he went to a heart transplantation. On the left side, uh, we also have a mixture of diagnosis. Some patients post cardiotomy, uh, where we have problems uh, weaning from bypass, and there have been various number of diagnoses, cabbage, maize, mitral regurgitation, and so on. We have uh, three patients who had uh, acute fulminant myocarditis, and who all recovered after being on Impella for a period of time. Some patients with uh, infarction and cardiogenic shock, and as I showed you before, we had uh, uh, in total five patients now doing high-risk PCI successfully. The third case uh, is an example how we use the larger peripheral Impella 5.0 as a bridge to recovery. It was a male, 47 years old. He was healthy, working full time, presented with fever and headache. Came to the hospital, hospital where echo showed only a moderate uh, dysfunction on the left side, and he had the clinical diagnosis of uh, myopericarditis. Three days later, he got worse, and he was transferred to the ICU, got inotropes, and so on. And now ECHO showed severe B ventricular failure with an injection fraction of uh, approximately 15%. In this acute situation, we implanted the Impella peripheral version 5.0. And here's the ECHO pictures. Uh, I can say both in the OR and the ICU, we use the ECHO to guide the pump in the right position. And uh, sometimes it happens, as you can see on the top pictures, that the pump, uh, the inflow goes against the mitral valve, but then you just have to, to twist the drive line a little bit to get the pump in the right position, as you see at the bottom. Uh, the pump is also designed so it has a kind of, of knee, so it, uh, when it comes into the right position, uh, it's a quite stable position. He was then treated with the Impella for eight days and circulatory. Uh, he improved and he had a cardiac output almost 12 liters and also an echo, he showed improvement. And at the end, before we weaned him, his left ventricular were in such good condition that it almost spitted the pump out and we thought that was a good sign for weaning. 
And one month later, he was uh, discharged from hospital, and two months later, he was back in, into New York uh, Heart Classification 1 and back to work. The fourth case is an example how we can use the smaller Impella 2.5 as a bridge to recovery. This is a male. He was 59 years old. He had an acute myocardial infarction. He had an acute mitral regurgitation and he had a severe left ventricular failure, and they did a rescue PCI against the circumflex artery. An echo showed also he had a severe mitral regurgitation, and he was in really poor condition with pulmonary edema and renal failure and so on. At this point, we had a discussion either to do an acute surgery due to the mitral regurgitation, but it was a high risk because he was in such a poor condition. So we decided to put him on Impella to support for a few days to do surgery on him when he was in a better condition. So his hemodynamics improved, we could reduce inotropes, and then three days later we did the cabbage and we gave him a mechanical uh, mitral valve. And after we have heparinized the patient, the Impella was turned off, and then we cross-clamped the aorta, did the surgery, and then restarted the impeller while weaning from bypass. And uh, this is how we did in the, in the practical way. You cross clamp the aorta and we kept the impeller in position. Uh, this is the impeller drive line you see here. You could, of course, if you don't want to cross clamp the aorta with the drive line there, you could redraw the impeller, cross clamp the aorta, and then when you want to wean from bypass, you can replace the impeller in position again. Anyhow, he was supported for another four days, and then we could remove uh, the impeller without hemodynamic changes. So this is a good example uh, how we could do uh, surgery in a, in a better, uh, on a better patient than doing it uh, acute. The last case is an uh, ongoing case at the ICU, ICU now, how we can use uh, uh, the peripheral impeller as a bridge to bridge, uh, it's a 51-year-old woman. She has a hospital history of heart failure for some months. She is on full medical treatment. She only had a slightly reduced left ventricular function before. She came into the hospital in an acute setting with an acute pulmonary edema. An echo now showed severe biventricular failure with an ejection fraction less than 15%. By this time, we didn't have so much information about this patient. So what we did in the acute setting, we implanted the Impella uh, 2.5. She could improve, uh, and we could start to evaluate the patient and get some more information. Finally, we decided that she will need a, a B-ventricular system. So we converted her to a BVAD AB5000, both on the right and the left side. The biopsy from the uh, implantation showed a mixture of both acute and a chronic inflammation. So she is now on high-dose steroids. And uh, this is a picture from Wednesday last week, and she is now extubated. The inotropes are gone. She's starting to produce urine. She is neurologically intact and so on. So hopefully this is an, a patient who is going to be able to wean from the assist devices within a period of months. So, in conclusion, in our hands, the uh, Impella, the whole Impella portfolio is uh, efficient and reliable. In all these patients, we had uh, no problems with, uh, no technical problems with any of these pumps. They are powerful, producing up to five liters per minute, which in the acute setting is sufficient for the most number of patients. They are minimally invasive. And it's a good way to use as a bridge to decision, to gain time to evaluate the patient and to decide what kind of long-term system you would implant. It's user-friendly, although there is, of course, a learning curve, as with all uh, technical devices. But uh, uh, the learning curve is, is pretty short. I mean, this is, is quite easy to learn how to use this pump. It also has a kind anticoagulation therapy with a, a mild heparinization. And finally, I think that's crucial, and that's timing. Uh, 
Uh, in, in our experience, uh, for example, when we have problems, by, uh, really problems, weaning from bypass, we don't go through uh, all inotropes and aortic balloon pumps and then impella. If we have problems in that situation, we put in the impella first. And if you really can unload the left side, then in our hands, it's a bigger chance that the left side will, will recover if you unload it a lot from the beginning. So this is an, another kind of recovery. Uh, our two children happily swimming in the uh, sea of Thailand last year. Okay, thank you for your attention.